Welcome to Key Conversations, a making it in the music business podcast. My goal for this podcast is to help you learn from these conversations with both experts and working musicians and serve as a guide to assist your career in the process. I'm your host, Cheryl B. Inglehart. Let's get going. Hello, we are back with another musician edition where we feature a hardworking musician who is creating their own dream career, open to a little guidance, and brave enough to be here in my hot seat. So I'm really excited to have Jace Hackman here. He is a Nashville singer and a Nashville songwriter, and we'll talk about why I said it that way. Um, he's also the guitar player for the Daniel Mason Band and the frontman for Jace and the Giants. And you can find out all about him at jacehackman.com. These links will be at the at the show pages. So Jace, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So tell me why Nashville singer slash is not a slash songwriter. It's not singer songwriter. How is that different for you? Because I, I love I love the reason behind this. Yeah, and it might not be different for anyone else, but especially because Nashville is such a songwriting town. When you say singer songwriter, it sets a certain connotation of somebody in a coffee shop with acoustic guitar probably only knows three or four chords and uses a capo and just kind of sings through those things and everything kind of sounds the same. Yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, that is an over-exaggeration, oversimplification, but that's not me. Like I'm, I'm a good, I'm a guitar player. I'm a session player. I play for lots of different people. And so when I go and do a show, even if it's by myself, it's not a singer songwriter night. It sounds like there's a full band there, just me doing my thing. And so I'm a, I'm somebody who sings and somebody who songwrites. I'm somebody who plays guitar. I'm not the genre of singer songwriter. Got it. I like that. And I like that you're very clear about the reason why. So that's super cool. Um, so what, what does your music career look like right now? You've got, you, it sounds like there's a lot of playing out, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, give, give us a snapshot of like what, what you do daily and if there, where's the incomes from coming from, who do you work with, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Predominantly right now, um, for the past, um, getting close to a year now, I've been playing for a band, the Daniel Mason band. Um, and that's been the predominant thing. Um, it's called the Daniel Mason band, but it's a four part ownership. Um, all of us kind of working together to make it happen. It's a Southern soul vintage pop. That's what we call it. Um, Daniel, the front man, uh, grew up in the country in a farmhouse while listening to Michael Jackson to kind of give an idea of the melding of two worlds. And so that's mostly what a lot of my time is doing with rehearsing, planning, business stuff related to that, gigs, and that's a lot of my music income right now. Um, I also have my own music, um, Jason the Giants and um, Blues Soul thing that uh, is, is kind of a passion project that I'm spending when I'm not doing the Daniel Mason thing. So I'm spending a lot of time doing and yeah. And I'm songwriter around town, weekly co-writes, um, trying to build that catalog and network and, and occasional uh, doing some recording for people and working, just bought a house. So working up my home studio. So I can do more of that from home. Wow. Congratulations on the house. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And your wife is not in the music industry, right? She is in the music industry. She is in the music industry. Yes. She is a far better singer and a far better songwriter than I will ever be. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. So you have, so you, you've got the, the music thing is all over the place for you. That's, that's yeah. really cool. So when that's you're Nashville. Playing, yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, Nashville. I hear that that's, that's the thing there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, how do you take advantage of being in a, a I mean, I, it's interesting. I just had a conversation with someone who is, you know, outside Denver and Colorado and like how to really make that work when you're not in one of these music hubs, LA, New York, Nashville, when you are in one of those hubs, how can you really make the most of it without getting overwhelmed or feeling like you're not good enough or the pool's too big? Like, how do you battle all that stuff? Yeah. I mean, those are real things. Um, <laughs> I mean, I tell people when they come to Nashville, I mean, they'll either be inspired or intimidated and mm. it's, it's a choice, you know, um, I go out somewhere and I will go see some guitar player who is one of the top five guitar players in the world, just hanging out in some club in Nashville, just tearing it up to nobody, you know? And, and it's like you either get completely shut down and go into shame zone or mm. you'd be like, man, I want to do that. And you practice and you get excited and it's, it, this is a town of a lot of depressed people because they, they can't keep the right mentality. Um, mm. But 
if you can, it's, it's a, I mean, you grow like crazy here. I'm a thousand times a musician from being here as before, before I got here. Hmm. But the huge disadvantage of this town too, though, is you will always be a small fish in a humongous, humongous pond. I'd be making way more money as a musician if I lived somewhere else. Hmm. But the network is here. The infrastructure is here. The talent is here. So it's a give and take. Yeah. So I like that you were talking about the, like the mindset is where it comes down to how do you keep yourself from going, slipping into the depressed? I mean, of course you all have, we have the normal voices that come in and out, but like overall you seem to be on the, the upside of, of that, um, you know, the inspiration side versus the depressed, overwhelmed side. So how do you, how do you stay there? What do you personally do or think, or. Um, I think for me, it's, it's key to continue to do things that I feel like give me measurable progress. You know, mm. as, as long as you feel like you look back two months from now or a year from now and be like, well, I got somewhere, you know, and then it's, it's, it's a lot easier to not be bummed out about where things are at, you know? Um, like, even if it's, it's just practicing my guitar or voice lessons, like something to measure progress is happening all the way to playing more shows than last year. All those things kind of help you like, yeah, I'm not the best, but I'm going somewhere. Yeah, I love that. I'm a big fan of movement. I say that a lot. And I'm also a big fan of measurable results, which basically just means when you come up with something that you want, it's got to be specific. Usually there's a number involved. I want to book this number of shows by this date. There's also usually a by when. And yeah. then you can measure, did I hit that or not? If you just say, I want to grow my fan list, that's not measurable. Um, and you can get one person and that technically you grew it great <laughs> mm-hmm. but I like I like that a lot that measurable um you know allows yeah. you to really see oh I am moving forward or I'm not let's change something up let's figure out what's what's right. working and do something else so that's that's super great I love that and I think a big part of it too is grace too you know um mm-hmm. like you you know, even in setting goals like you should set goals that are hard but attainable but also realize that ha- life happens not you can't make excuses for yourself but you can give yourself grace and even if that's where, you know, you're not quite where you're at, um, I'm the type of person to beat myself. I want to be the best at everything, absolutely everything. And I want to read every book. I want to play every instrument. I want to do it all. And I spread myself way too thin. And I, you know, I've got to give myself grace to be like, you know what, this isn't my strong suit. I need to focus on what I'm good at, or I need to you know, step back and be like, okay, I didn't reach this goal, but I, but I crushed this goal over here. And and uh, just have some self-care in that area. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's really awesome. I'm in the middle of being not graceful. I had a, I've been doing this like tech setup for my backend library. So I could send people, here's my library, my 300 tracks I've written. And um, it was supposed to be done like a month ago. And then I got it so close to being like perfect. And then somehow I deleted a half of the library and all the metadata is gone. And I'm like pulling my hair out. I'm talking to the CEO of the company. Like, why is it so hard to set up? I'm technically savvy. And I'm like, oh, this is not graceful. This is not <laughs> a pretty thing but yeah it's the circumstances how you how are you in the face of them so I was like all right take a breath let's just handle it it's gonna get up <laughs> so, that's awesome so what's next for you what is the what it speaking of measurable results like what what do you have your eye on yeah I mean uh the band right now has some goals um we we need to reassess them because we had we had a gig opportunity that we thought was gonna just like change everything and it ended up being like a one or two gig thing opposed to a tour Mm. so we need to reassess our goals but um we had some goals of uh, a dollar amount for recording a record this year releasing a certain number of videos this year um we had a uh we have an amount of fans we want on facebook likes on facebook our email list we wanted to grow to a specific amount by the end of the year awesome um, again, we need to re our goals are a little too high now because that opportunity did not work out, but, um, but we're still shooting for like they were like through there, but yeah. yeah, cool. Those are, that's great. And a lot of those goals feed into the other. So when you get a lot mm-hmm. more, you know, people on your mailing list and then you send out an email saying, Hey, are you guys on our, liking our Facebook page? Boom. Then you got your, they, you can, you know, sort of leverage one success in one area to build the success in the other areas so when they're yeah, like, I love that and it's all like rolling downhill once you get like especially Facebook likes like one once 
they they like multiply. Once you start getting some, they start getting them for themselves. It kind of seems like it's like interest on money. I feel like with Facebook, you know, the more you start getting, the more they start rolling in. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So how do you personally, when you're going out and doing songwriting, is it now just all word of mouth? Do you feel like you, like do you send your website out? Do you feel like you have to send the website out for the Daniel Mason and Jason, the giants, or are you like, how do you kind of brand yourself when you're in these conversations or cold calling or making connections yeah I'm kind of in a I find myself in a weird spot with that all right now I'm kind of rethinking my brand right now um because I was doing just just me for a while and now I'm doing this other project that is like people are just getting excited about it you know and there's some self-realization of okay my music is really good but it is far more niched but this other band is like people are really identifying with it. And I have a team to help me get stuff done, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, it's kind of been a rebranding thing. So like, how do I, how do I do this gracefully where I'm, I am part of the Daniel Mason band. I've still got my project going on. I'm still a songwriter. I'm still a guitar player. How do I do that all? And um, I'm just kind of reforming my brand of all of it under the umbrella of Jace, you know, It's like like a company that um, owns smaller companies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, trying to figure out the best way to when I'm promoting one of them, I'm promoting all of them. Yet the focus is on one at that specific time. Sure. To me, that's a uh, a simple shift, especially if we're just talking about website. If you had the you know the menu, the tab on your menus, yeah. the menu tabs, just moving those over, I feel like it's really it says a lot what the order is of those. So if you have right. a tab that says Daniel Mason Band, and that's not even a page on your site, it just goes straight to the Daniel Mason Band page. Great, people will get that. Then it's you know songwriter, singer, guitarist, yeah. and then you have you know, and boom, there someone can read your, your the menu of your web page and get it. You know? Yeah, and especially because we're in this day and age of where it's so much like it is the brand of us, you know, with, with social media, Instagram, Facebook, it's like your identity is your brand. And mm-hmm. and um, for a while, I was kind of like creating these competing worlds between my band, Daniel Mason band. And how do I do that? Like, now I just need to embrace that these are all me. And if people are a fan of me, they'll be a fan of the things that I'm a part of. Yeah, there'll Absolutely. be some people who like one or the other. But if people like me as a person, as a guitar player, they'll be on board for whatever I'm doing. And I need to embrace that and run towards those people. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So are we going to get to hear a song from you or from the Daniel Mason band? What are you, what are you going to yeah. let us hear? I think I'm going to throw out a song with Daniel Mason band a song. You don't have to be lonely. Um, again, we're like Southern soul vintage pop. It's got like this hard groove on it. Three part harmonies. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Oh man. This, I'm loving that you fa- the fact that you said the word grace twice and that you've got this like great positive outlook. I think this is going to be a really inspiring <laughs> episode for people to listen to. So Jace Hackman, everybody go to jacehackman.com to see all of these things. Mm-hmm. And um, thanks for being here. I really, yeah. really appreciate it. My pleasure. Please don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube if you like this podcast. Musicians like you keep me inspired and motivated. And for doing that, I'm offering you access to my seven-day challenge, which takes only a half an hour a day and helps you develop a complete set of positive habits for how you work at your career, from goal setting to finances to branding. Get access at inthekey.co slash seven-day challenge. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time on Key Conversations. The theme song on this podcast was provided by yours truly. If you're interested to find out more about my composing and songwriting projects, go to inthekey.co slash Cheryl. If you're a musician looking to get some real results for your music career, then head to inthekey.co slash results, where I've created a bunch of different kinds of resources just for you. Key Conversations is sponsored in part by Banzoogle. They make it easy to build a beautiful website for your music. Their step-by-step system gets you online in minutes, and you can choose from hundreds of mobile-friendly themes and customize them with their point-and-click editor. All of the features you can imagine for a possible website are built in. So because you're a Key Conversations podcast listener, you get a special month-free trial plus 15% off if you do decide to sign up just for you. Go to inthekey.co slash make a site to get the offer. 